guys, welcome to Driven Hard. I'm a Mecca. We are in a 2020 Range Rover Velar, uh, our dynamic. And I got one thing I want to figure out. Does this actually deserve to be called a Range Rover? Or is there something that you just had it, you know what, cut off? That's what we're going to find out in this video. So being able to drive around this Velar for a little bit, and as soon as I got it, I had to do what um, pretty much 99% of all um, new Velar owners are going to do. Find a trail like this. And I'm on the way to the mall, but I must have taken a wrong turn somewhere because I'm not finding it. But luckily, we do have Land Rover's train response system. This is not train response too, so I don't have an auto mode, but I do have grass, gravel, snow, mud ruts, uh, sand, no low range, a single center locking differential, no rear locking differential. Uh, that is optional. But we're gonna put the transmission into sport and keep it in first gear as we creep along here. We do have hill descent control. Now, I'm gonna be a little biased coming from a Range Rover. Right, I drive a Range Rover Sport. Um, so, you know, everything that I get my hands on, I am gonna be kind of comparing it to that. Driving it around on these type of trails and uh, some of the other sections I've been going on, I definitely miss not having a low range. Um, the gearing in this transmission, it, it is adjusted and the electronics are doing what they can, but honestly, don't kid yourself, nothing does beat a traditional low range two-speed transfer case. Um, just the, the, the amount of torque that you get from that is just absolutely incredible. So we are running on their on the stock 21 performance tires, which are definitely not designed for this type of terrain. Let me give you guys a quick tour of uh, the the inside. Now, here's one thing I've definitely noticed. On the Range Rover, I can sit my elbow up on this as I'm driving, right? But in the VR, you're actually sitting a lot lower. Um, and so the, this is designed for your elbow. Um, I don't know if it's just because I'm a bigger guy or whatever, but uh, it's just one of those things I've, I've noticed a little different. So when, you get in it, um, you got JLR's familiar um, infotainment system. Now this is not the refresh model for 2021, I believe that's coming out with, that you're gonna have a new shifter um, and slightly redesigned interior. Um, you know, Alcantara here, perforated leather. It's not the nicest leather by any means. It's just super, super stiff. So I don't remember the leather on my Range Rover being that stiff when it was new, but you know, it's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah, like it's a decent interior. It's not the best interior, I'd say, right? What, what do you guys think? Let me know, let me know what you think um, of it in the comments there. What's cool is to go into the off-road settings, you hit vehicle, and then you can raise and lower the suspension by just pressing that button. You see it's going up here. Okay. Um, then you have your dynamic, you have your eco, your comfort. You can also use this dial to switch um, through all the modes. Right? Uh, low traction launch shows up. Um, you also can go into your off-road information pages and it'll show you right so what the wheels are doing articulation uh, your slope compass and then off-road information All right you know overall it's a clean it's a simple um, simple 
interior, hill descent control, traction control, your your uh, HVAC controls. It, it's it's I, I don't know what you guys want me to tell you about it. It's it's decent. Um, is it what you want to pay for? Is is it good value for your money for, at the price tag of what you're paying for this? I think that's for 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 you to call. Depends on what you're looking for. Um, in, in it, I would definitely maybe shop around. Like if I was looking at a Velar, I would definitely make sure I'm looking at the Sport in terms of material uh, quality on the inside, because price point wise, you know, it's a little bit more for for a Range Rover Sport um, versus the Velar. So just keep that in mind. But I think a lot of people they are buying this for the exterior styling, because remember, guys, the Velar got awarded the most important award uh, award that vehicles ever want best looking or what it was the fashion award or something like that something stupid in 20, 2018 but i don't know you guys tell me is this something you like i hate the back end absolutely hate it, it looks way too fat but i don't know but we are here to figure out one thing. How's it gonna do on crawling up this? So uh, we're gonna find out. All right, so we're in modern ruts. The suspension's at the highest setting. <sighs> we're gonna put it in S1. And once again, no low range, no rear locker, just a center differential lock. No camera system either. You, on train, um, train response two, you would get the full off-roading cameras. trust hill descent control without a low range because the speed is just going to be a little too high still so i'm still using the brakes so land rover has a, what's called gradual brake release so i'm on the brake right now but if i take my pet if i take my foot off the pedal it's actually going to um gradually release the brake at a slower rate it's not just going to instantly release it see and now that's kind of cool.
So if you guys take a look at what's in front of me here, and the reason I'm not gonna go any further, it's not the tires, okay? It's due to the fact of the lower inch. Because what's gonna happen, and I know this is gonna happen because I've overheated my transmission, my gearbox before, is if I keep going, the gearbox is gonna overheat due to the lack of the lower inch. So um, let's let's wrap up, and let's, let me give you my final thoughts on the 2020 Range Rover Velar. So when I started this video, I wanted to determine, is this Range Rover Velar really worthy of holding on to that Range Rover name? And comparing it to my current Range Rover Sport, um, I'd honestly say no. And I know this is probably gonna upset a lot of Velar owners, but as soon as you get in this thing, you sit lower, right? Where the Range Rovers always had this commanding presence, right? The commanding drive position is what Range Rover calls it or Land Rover calls it. With the Velar, you don't get it. This is very much car-like. Is it still capable um, off-road? Absolutely. Is it as capable of um, the Range Rover? Absolutely not. The Range Rover or the Range Rover Sport will absolutely destroy this thing off-road due to the fact of better um, approach angles, departure angles, ground clearance, and a low-range transfer case. Um, that low-range transfer case gives you so much more bloody control, especially with the throttle control than you get with um, the current setup with uh, this transmission here. Um, is there a market for, for, for something like this? Absolutely. Um, I think the people who buy this, they're going to be happy with it. Um, they just have to know exactly what they're getting. And, um, you know, obviously Land Rover's done their homework with it. They know there is a market for it. Um, is it for me? No, uh, not at all. But if you are in the market for one of these, definitely look at it. Definitely take it seriously. But I'd encourage you also shop and price out a Range Rover Sport. Take a look at the options. Go for a test drive in it because you might be blown away at spending a little bit more on a Range Rover Sport is going to get you a lot more, especially we didn't, I didn't even talk about uh, comfort. Um, this does have air suspension, thank God, but um, definitely you're going to have a lot more comfort, uh, a lot more of a comfortable ride in 
the actual Range Rover. Till next time, everybody. Hey, I'm a Mecca. Let me know what you thought in the comments here. And uh, till next time, drive hard.